Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. God loves impossible. Let me ask you a question. Is there anything that you genuinely believe that God cannot do? Some people don't believe in miracles. Some people don't believe miracles happen in today's day and age. And still there are some people who don't believe God can fix their impossible situation. Well, what do you believe? Here are two scriptures I would like you to think about. One, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Luke 1 and verse 37. Number two, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Luke 18 and verse 27. Let me now tell you a story. This has to do with the prophet Elisha, a man of God who lived in Israel approximately 880 years before Christ was born. Just by way of background, Elisha was a prophet who was groomed to succeed Elijah, that great prophet who was one of two persons in the Bible who did not die. Anyway, Elisha was an itinerant preacher, miracle worker, who went around from town to town, and so he seemed to frequently visit a particular community in Israel. A rich Shunammite woman lived in that community, and Elijah used to have an evening meal at her home whenever he was in town. This woman pointed out to her husband that the prophet is frequently in the community and he has nowhere to sleep. So she came up with the idea that she would show kindness to the prophet and build a small room as part of her house so that Elijah could stay there when he was in town. He accepted the offer and made use of it. After a while, he thought of doing something good for this woman. His personal assistant, Gehazi, did some research and came up with a report that the biggest problem this woman has was that she did not have children and her husband is old. This was to suggest that even if she could have children, now her husband was too old to father a child. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? The word impossible? So he said to his servant, call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Elijah then said to her, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. <laughs> and she said, no, my Lord, no, my Lord. Man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. Second Kings 4, 15 and 16. Hold on, in case you forget, we are exploring the concept that nothing is impossible with God. Shall we continue? The woman had a son the next year. Jubilation all around. The lad grew up and one day, while out with his father in the field, started to have a bad headache. He died around noon that very day. The mother went into faith mode. Her miracle son has died, and the only thing she could think about is to go find Elisha. He was the one who prophesied, and she had a son a year later. This man of God certainly can do something for her. She told no one her plans, but she raced by horse to find Elisha. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? Didn't I tell you don't raise my hopes up? 2 Kings 4 and verse 28. Elisha got the message and he first sent his servant ahead of him to lay his staff on the boy's body. Of course, nothing happened. Elisha got there shortly after and went straight to the room where the deceased boy was lying on his bed. Elisha prayed to the Lord and he stretched himself across the dead boy's body and soon he felt the body begin to get warm. He got up did the same routine, and this time the boy sneezed seven times. That mother came and took her son, who was dead a few minutes before, but now a miracle has happened, and he was alive and well. What really happened in this story? I told you the details, but I want you to pay attention to one little statement that I made. Elisha went into the room where the body of the boy was lying across the bed and Elisha prayed. Does God do the impossible? 
listen to what God has to say at the most basic. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. If you are skeptical, you might choose to dismiss, dismiss that because it really doesn't say specifically what God can or cannot do, notwithstanding that he made an open statement that if you call him, he will answer and do some things that you could never imagine. But I suspect that that is not enough for you to believe that everything is, imposs is possible with God. Well, do you remember the story of the Virgin Mary? how the angel told her she was going to get pregnant. She rejected that story because up to that date, she was still a virgin. She had never had sex to, with anybody. So it is impossible for her to get pregnant. Aha. The angel told her that God and the Holy Spirit were going to do this miraculous thing and she will conceive. Mary got it. Mary got it. And somehow by miraculous ways, as promised by the prophet, by the angels, she conceived. Well, here's the footnote of that section of the nativity story. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Luke 1 and verse 37. The most practical way to convince you is for you to experience God himself doing something impossible. God laid his resume on the table, table while in a discussion with Jeremiah the prophet. Let me share this exchange between the prophet and God. Jeremiah was praying to God and said the following words. Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. Those were Jeremiah's words, not God's words. He had come to acknowledge from what he had learned about God, the numerous records of God's actions in the affairs of humans, the miraculous things that were happening in his community, that there really is nothing that is hard for God. So imagine how Jeremiah felt when God asked him a rhetorical question. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 33 and verse 28. God cannot be stumped by an impossible. His records show that he did some impossible things and continues to do those things all over the world. That is because there is nothing that is impossible with God. You might want to trust God with something that looks impossible, however small or large. God is not daunted by what seems impossible. He embraces man's impossible situation, which shows that God is powerfully good.